You know, most people wouldn't think that you can rig a kayak with a sonar, but I gotta tell you, these ocean kayaks, the fishing edition, come pre-rigged with a transducer that is already mounted through the hull, that's where the transducer is, and if you hear that ticking, tick, 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 that's the actual sound signal going down, and here is the 383C, GPS fish finder. So this is an amazing unit. It gives you all kinds of views. You can zoom in on the bottom. This uh, gives you all of the details for speed and so on in bigger numbers. So the nice thing is that even in a kayak, you can rig it with a sonar, just like this one, and you can fish out in the lake or river systems and have the confidence that you can catch lots of fish. Now this one is exposed. You don't even have to take it off the mount even though it's very easy to take off. All you do is push it down when you're not using it. So this will go down like this, so it's out of the way. This particular kayak is the 15 foot model. It actually has a sonar shield because it's designed to fish in open water. A lot of people on the west coast of North America use these sometimes three, four, five miles offshore. And they have the sonar shield so they don't get a lot of salt. So look at this. There's the shield and there's the sonar. It pops up and if it's sunny, this is a great shade. It provides shade when you're sitting in the boat and you've got the sonar on. So these sonars also can be interchanged with the 787 models which have a, an antenna. GPS and they also take the cards that have the hydrographic charts. So what a neat way to fish. You know, if you like the idea of using a sonar, now you can even get a sonar in your fishing kayak. That way you'll catch more fish. You know, the nice thing about fishing the Welland River is that you can get a variety of fish, just like I have today. I've got a largemouth, some walleye. This is my first little pike. Um, there's actually, believe it or not, muskie in the Welland River, up to like 20, 30 pounds. I've seen them. You guys can't believe this pike. He's actually jumped a couple times out of the water. Yeah, I want him to fight a little bit because that rapala has two treble hooks on it, so I don't want to get my hands stuck in it. Hopefully he won't shake. Are you okay? Are you calm? I'm gonna let you go. Everything's okay. I got the one hook out. The other hook's out. Look it. It's a. It's probably gonna fly out of my hands. It's aquarium size. I'm guessing that fish is about uh, 14, 15. No, more than that. He's about 17 inches long. There he goes. Okay. This is kind of fun. Just casting crankbaits, fishing the bank like this. And any time you can get large walleye, you know, up to like 26, 29 inches, you can get big musky, lots of panfish. I've only caught one rock bass this morning. I'm surprised I haven't gotten more, but you can see there's lots of trees overhanging the water. And I'm still in uh, six, seven feet of water here. So there's lots of depth of fish at crankbait. This is nice. You know, it's funny, it's almost noon. It's uh, 11.55 and the fish are hitting in the middle of the day. When we fished earlier this morning, we started at about 8 o'clock. We actually had a slow period for a couple of hours. All oh, right, different species. This is a smallmouth. So you talk about variety. You know, they're not big fish, but when you're fishing out of a kayak like this, middle of the day, it's July. With your dog, you can't complain, right? And he's hit it nicely. He's got one hook in his mouth and one's tacked just on the back of his head. See if I can hold him up here for a second. Come on. There we go. Nice little small mouth. I'm guessing he's about a uh, pound and a half. Okay. I'm going to hold him just up like that. Look it. Large mouth, small mouth, walleye, pike, maybe a muskie today. Who knows? See if I can get my finger in there without getting hurt. This guy's hooked kind of nicely. He wasn't going to get anywhere. He, fought, he felt bigger than he was just because of the way the second hook got caught. And it's just underneath the gill plate. Maybe I will use my pliers. So I'm going to take one out first. Yeah, you got to have the tools. You know, look, at, it's a lot easier than struggling with it. And the main hook that was in his mouth was that sure set hook, that long treble. So that's kind of neat. Okay, so a nice little small mouth. Look at that. I'm going to put him in the water. He's going to take off, I'm sure, very quickly. Pretty fish. Tons of energy.
Well, Cindy, a lot of boaters and especially fishermen are attracted to fishing below dams and hydroelectric generating stations. Should they be cautious? They should be very cautious because a spot that is calm and seems safe one minute can actually turn into a very dangerous situation very, very quickly. The best thing to remember if you are around dams or hydroelectric stations is to uh, just actually stay clear and stay safe.